What's going on all you mentees? This is the Uncanny Omar from Near Mint Condition and join me today for an advanced look at the X-Men Age of Apocalypse Omnibus reprint from Marvel Comics coming out this week. So, please stay tuned. And welcome back everybody. Before getting started, a huge thank you to David Gabriel and the fine folks of Marvel for sending us an advanced copy of this omnibus. This omnibus reprint is due out in the direct market on June 2nd and then a couple of weeks later in the book market. What we're looking at here is the direct market copy. This is the one that's only going to be available at comic book stores or places like CheapGraphicNovels.com, Tales of Wonder, and Stock Trades. And then my original copy here on the left-hand side is the cover to the standard edition. That's the one by Billy Tan, and of course this is the one by Joe Mad. Now, let's look at the spines. So the spines on the standard edition, they'll probably keep the E.N. Churchill apocalypse there. And then on the direct market edition, they'll probably keep the Andy Kubert piece of art down there. On the back, here are all the issues that are collected within this omnibus and the covers. Here's the content. The content of what's collected in the omnibus is down there. And then the covers to that specific content. The price being $125 for the original printing and the new printing. But let's look at them under the dust jackets. So mine is the first printing. It has the X-Men, the Age of Apocalypse Omnibus logo there. Then, of course, the spine. Just what they use for the Marvel Masterworks. Whereas the new printing has the image to X-Men, Age of Apocalypse Alpha. The artwork is on the front and the backboard as well as the spine. Now, let's take a closer look in here and talk a little bit about what this is. All right, we have some black bookend pages and picture of Ian Churchill's Age of Apocalypse. This is from The Chosen. The image again from X-Men Alpha. Here's the contents of what's collected in here. Legion Quest leading up to Age of Apocalypse and then ends with X-Men Omega. So here we, here's what kicks off everything, Legion Quest. So this is the image from Uncanny X-Men 320, but this book also contains Uncanny X-Men 321, uh, Cable number 20, X-Men Adjectiveless X-Men 40 and 41, X-Men Alpha, Amazing X-Men 1 through 4, Astonishing X-Men 1 through 4, Factor X 1 through 4, Yambit and the Externals 1 through 4, Generation Next 1 through 4, Weapon X 1 through 4, the four issue miniseries of Excalibur, X-Man 1 through 4 and X-Men Omega as well as the Chosen and then the Ashcan number 2. So, what is this? What, what what's what's going on in these pages and what why is this such a popular book with this popular event with um, X-Men lovers? So, I have to give a little bit of a spoiler as to how all of this happens. And when I did my reading order, I don't really think I I went into detail, but Legion Quest is the story of, so just in case, spoilers of just Legion Quest and what leads into the Age of Apocalypse. So if you're worried about that, maybe mute it and I'll tell you when to come back. I'll put the timestamp in the description of the video. All right, so Legion Quest. Legion Quest is the storyline of David Holler. David Holler is the son of Professor Xavier and has multiple personalities and each personality has its own mutant power. So. He wakes up from a coma. He's been in a coma since the uh, Shadow King saga, the Muir Island saga. And when he wakes up in X-Factor, which is not collected here, it's actually collected in the X-Men Legion Quest hardcover, um, he decides, you know, I'm going to fix everything. I'm going to make this right for my dad. I'm going to travel back in time and kill Magneto so that my dad does not have an opposing force against him. So that's exactly what he does. He travels back in time to a younger uh, t uh, days of Magneto and Professor X when they were buddies. And his whole goal is to wipe out Magneto. Now, when doing that, he makes a mistake. And the mistake is felt throughout the entire galaxy. So much so that the Shi'ar Empire comes down here and with the Council of Watchers and warns the X-Men that something huge is going to happen unless they fix it. Now, this affects the m -Crime crystal and its reality is about to shatter. So, when he goes back in time, he makes a mistake. He accidentally ends up killing his own dad instead of Magneto. And therefore, warping all reality and shattering it. 
destroying it. Now, there were four X-Men that traveled back in time that tried to stop it, one of them being Bishop, who plays an important part in the Age of Apocalypse. But everything ends. All the titles ended for Marvel Comics for four months. And let's see. Let's go into the Age. Then we get begin this saga. So here's the spoiler-free overview. So this is the saga of the Age of Apocalypse after the events of Legion Quest. There's a mysterious man running around that seems to remember some things of the way that life was supposed to be. We have familiar faces looking different. I love these type of stories. It's your days of future past. It's your days of future present. It's your alternate reality. It's your else worlds. It's your what if. But it's one big event. So we have, for example, Eunice the Untouchable, an old X-Men villain show up. And in this world, mutants rule and humans are no longer in control. So the series kicks off with uh, Scott Lobdell writing the story. Uh, you have artwork in here. Believe it or not, this is Roger Cruz making a huge change from his Jim Lee type of art style to his Joe Mad type of art style within a month's time. So I remember when I read this, this, um, this was the last huge event that I really enjoyed. And I was thinking, oh man, Joe Mad had enough time to draw X-Men Alpha and draw Astonishing X-Men? That's crazy. So that's what happens. Uh, there's an alternate reality because of the things of Legion Quest and each title was cancelled. So Uncanny X-Men was cancelled and became Astonishing X-Men. Uh, Adjectiveless X-Men was cancelled and became Amazing X-Men. And uh, Wolverine became Weapon X and Cable became X-Man. So that's what this Generation X became Generation Next. And that's what this is. This is an alternate reality. It's your characters that you've been reading about for years in a different form. You see old faces come back. Some people that have been dead for a long time come back. And some people that are alive in our reality, in our 616 reality as we call it now, are dead in this world. But it was... This was so much talent when it is. You had Fabian Iciesa, you had Scott Lobdell, Larry Hama, Mark Waits. Uh, first few issues of his run on X-Men start here. Uh, and then you've got, of course, the artists. You've got uh, Steve Epting, you have Adam Cooper, you have Andy Cooper, you have Joe Matt, uh, you have Steve Scrose, just to name a few. Uh, Warren Ellis, I forgot, Warren Ellis writes some of this stuff as well as Ken... Uh, Ken Lashley drawing it. The story of Excalibur is pretty interesting too because it almost feels like its own little pocket universe. Like they couldn't find something exactly for Nightcrawler and his gang to do. But I do like the characters that they use. Like there's a character in here, um, like Proudstar, and there's a character that shows up within these pages that is uh, the new Black Queen of the Hellfire Club during Ellis' run. So, this is the Age of Apocalypse. Apocalypse rules this world. Everybody looks different. He has four new horsemen. Some of them you may uh, be able to recognize. Some of them look a lot different. You're like, who the heck is that supposed to be? That was a lot of fun, trying to recognize who was who. But this is what the artwork looks like. This book has been printed three different times. This is his third printing, in case you missed it the first two times. But it's such an epic event. I always recommend it to people. Um, the other thing I was going to say is that... The Companion is also being reprinted. The Companion has other stories that are not collected here. And I'll talk about what the differences are when we do an advanced overview of that. But both of these for the first time, or actually, no, the Companion for the first time is getting a direct market cover. This has had a direct market cover since its first printing. But it's this huge battle. It's it's Magneto versus Apocalypse, two opposing forces that you never thought would be fighting each other. Magneto's married in this alternate reality. Magneto has a wife and a child. Very cool. And then we have this character of X-Man. Now, X-Man does end up being the only title that continues past issue 4. It carries over into the 616 universe, but then you're probably wondering how in the world is Cable and X-Man still being published. And it was a pretty interesting time. That's all, that's all I will say about that, reading X-Men comics. Salvador La Roca ends up finishing Tony Daniels' run on... Uh, X-Force, which became Gambit in the Externals. Here, I'm going to show you right here. Because Tony Daniel ended up leaving halfway through this event to go and do a book for Image Comics. And then, after this event, sadly, Fabian Iciesa leaves the X-Books for good. So let's look in the back for some extras. So in the back, you have the Age of Apocalypse The Chosen. So this works like a pretty unique 
um, guide to the Age of Apocalypse universe. So it's your handbook guide to the Age of Apocalypse universe. Catches you up to speed. Did not even mean to turn to that page. Um, to tell you who's alive, who's dead, what the status quo is of these characters. Different artists take on all these new characters, or quote-unquote new characters. Let's look in the back here, because we do have the Ashkin back here. Now, the original idea, I remember, was to call X-Men and Uncanny X-Men the Mutants. That was the original idea. Because that was the original name that Stanley wanted to use for X-Men, was call them the Mutants. But they decided not to confuse, I guess, people and decided against that. Here's a pinup here. I'm um, not really sure who did that pinup. I've always thought it was Salvador La Roca, but I could be mistaken. No, it is. It is Salvador La Roca. So it's a house ad. Love that. That is so awesome. It's a promotional ad. It's an introduction to the trade paperback. Uh, these are the letter pages back here telling you what's changed and who some of these familiar faces could be. And then the covers to the trade paperbacks. You know, I've always stated that there weren't a lot of collected addiction or addictions. Oh, Kenny Omar talked pretty one day. There weren't a lot of collected editions back in the 80s and 90s. But one of the things I do remember was these coming out. These gold foil trade paperbacks of all these little miniseries coming out. And here is your standard edition cover to the Omnibus Collection uh, with Billy Tan's artwork. Now... I didn't show any pages of X-Men Omega, but um, yeah, that one is also drawn by Roger Cruz and it has a cover by um, John Romita Jr. Now, let's look at the binding and then do a comparison here. So the book has 1,028 pages, and here is what the binding looks like. Look at a couple of spread pages towards the beginning, and we'll do a comparison with the original printing here a little bit, but here's one right here, this little interlude from X-Men that leads into Wolverine 90, one of the most biggest and most badass fights between Wolverine and Sabretooth. And let's see if I can show any from the back. I'll just play it safe and show the cover again to the Age of Apocalypse, the front and back cover, The Chosen. All right, let's do a comparison to the original printing. All right, original printing and new printing. So other than your front and back board, the end pages here a little darker than these grayish end pages. The color on Apocalypse on the original printing looks a little more vibrant than the colors here in the newer printing. A little more vibrant colors up at the top than the newer printing. Here's your table of contents and your credits. And both of these are printed at the Donley printer in China. So it's the same printer that Marvel used for the first printing and the second printing. So let's look at some spreads here. So here are um, examples of some spreads. This is from the very first issue of Uncanny X-Men 320. Uh, now my book, like I mentioned, this is my first printing, my original printing. It's been read quite a number of times. As a matter of fact, I think I ended up lending it to my friend Ben, uh, which I never really do with Omnis. But it has been properly opened, whereas this one has only been opened once. Or actually, no, I think I op I did the uh, flexing of the spine twice. But this is what you're looking at. So very minimal gutter loss compared to the original printing. And the same thing going on here in these uh, sp spreads because you can see a little more of the faces that are towards the middle where the gutter is. Just a little bit more than you can the faces here. As a matter of fact, Jean Grey, you can only see her eyes and nose, whereas here you can see her lips without, of course, pushing down on it. So, But by the time you get to about half of the book, they look identical as far as the gutter curve. There is going to be some gutter loss in both, but very minimal. I know it bothers some people, so that's why I want to mention it. Uh, the other thing that I've noticed is the paper quality. Of course, we're Talking about almost a decade between these. It's a little bit thinner. The newer printer is, or I'm sorry, the newer printing is a little bit thinner than the original printing. Let's do a comparison towards the back. And here are some spread pages from the back of the book from Amazing X Men. So this uh, first printing is a little bit thicker. For those of you just keeping tabs on these kind of things. But that, as they say, is that.
If you're interested in purchasing this book, don't forget to check out our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online source for collected editions up to 50% off retail price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on excellent packaging, so your stuff gets to you in excellent condition, and they have amazing customer service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And for all you minties that are watching, if you're a first-time customer, don't forget to mention that Near Mint Condition sent you their way for a promotional credit on free shipping on your next order. Now, this is only for US customers. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your source for the hottest books with deep discounts, customer service, and excellent shipping that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content, the page count, and the build of the omnibus. And of course, the comparison to the original printing. Let me know in the comments down below if you missed out on this omnibus and you're picking it up this way. If you already have the trade paperbacks and you're keeping them and not upgrading, if you have the original printing. Again, this was the Uncanny Omar. Thank you all so much for watching. If you have any more questions, leave those comments down below. And more importantly, everyone, stay healthy, stay safe, and much love. <music>